Hey folks, I'm Mike. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I like? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence. It keeps this blog ad free. Hello folks and welcome to Inkdependence. Today we're taking a look at a standard pen, not a fountain pen or an ink. This is a Zebra Serrari pen. Uh, I picked this up at Jet Pens about a year ago, I guess. I keep meaning to do a review on it. And so I decided, you know what, let's do a little review on this guy. Um, I got this as a single pen. I haven't tried any of the other colors. I've only tried the uh, the black and I've only tried the 0.5. Uh, I think I might like one of the wider ones better, but for those of you who like a really fine point, uh, ballpoint sort of uh, pen, this one might be something to look at. Um, these cost a buck sixty-five, so it's not going to break the bank. It's definitely on the other end of the uh, price spectrum from some of the other stuff we occasionally look at on this channel. Uh, this is a 0.5 millimeter, and also the interesting thing about this is it is a different kind of ink. You've got your like sort of roller balls, like this Mark One, which has a roller ball refill in it. Uh, you've got your gel pens, like the Pilot Juices and such. You've got your uh, ball points, like. Uh, uh, like uh, Karen Osh 849, for example, as a ballpoint. And uh, they're all a little bit different, but this one is called an emulsion ink, and I'm not exactly sure how it works, honestly. There aren't a lot of details, but um, it is uh, it's supposed to have the smoothness of an oil-based ballpoint, because those ballpoint inks, like your ones in, like, um, uh, like these guys, this is a Shown Designs pen, which uses... The, uh, the the pressurized space pen refill, that's a ballpoint. And those are all oil-based, like, you know, this uh, Karan Dosh guy. And so they have a very nice smoothness to them, but sometimes you get some skipping a little bit occasionally. Um, but you also get some, uh, some vibrant color from this, it says, like you would with a gel pen, and gel pens are very bright and vibrant, um, but also kind of like sticky, and they take, have like long dry times and stuff. So um, a cool thing about these is that they are supposed to dry almost instantly, and they're supposed to have nice thick color like a gel, and they're supposed to be smooth like a ballpoint. So it's supposed to be like the best of all worlds, including waterproofness. These are supposed to be very, very waterproof. Um, I'm not going to test that here today, but uh, ballpoint inks just are waterproof in general, so I'll just let that go uh, and assume that it's true. Um, here is a writing sample with this guy. Let's uh, zoom in just a little bit, maybe. All right. Um, and so, as you can see, this is actually a very, very fine point for a 0.5 millimeter. We'll look at it compared to a bunch of other uh, uh, sizes of uh, you know various pens and such here in a sec, but uh, one thing to know is that this is a very, uh, very... <laughs> It's very fine, uh, especially on this paper. This is a, rhodia, a piece of rhodia that I tore out. I'm going to show it to you on a more absor absorbent paper, and like a softer paper here in a bit, because the paper actually makes a huge difference to your uh, writing experience. Whether you're writing with a ballpoint or a fountain pen or any of that, don't forget about the paper. Um, so this stuff is the, you know, the coated stuff that I use for my fountain pens, and it's great for fountain pens, and it's not bad for ballpoints usually. Um, this one is okay on this paper, honestly. Um, no smears or any weird things like that. In fact, it does uh, it does write or dry fast enough on this even for me to you know write with it and then run a finger over it and it doesn't seem to smear. So this stuff does dry pretty quickly. I saw some comments on the JetPen site that said that like, it's smeared all over the place, but I, I don't know why because mine doesn't do that. So all I can tell you is that this particular one doesn't. So um, some pros and cons here. Uh, it does come in different sizes, which is nice. 0.5, this is the smallest. And really, I think this is, this is a very, very fine 0.5. This is probably closer to a 0.4 maybe a 0.38. So if you like those fine ones, go for it. I might try getting the 1.0 or a 7. Maybe I'll get one of each because I mean, they're like, you know, they're under two bucks a piece. So whatever. Ain't going to break the bank. Um, and I do like the way the ink feels. I just think it's too fine for me. So pros, it's a very fine five millimeter line. You can also put that in the cons uh, if you're me and you like a thicker point. Um, seems to dry really quickly, doesn't really skip, and the knock feels good. This is a this is a good feeling knock in this thing for a little cheap pen. Uh, the clip seems to be good. It's a nice stiff clip. It doesn't feel like it's going to break off though, uh, so that's nice. Uh, the grip has got a nice rubbery feeling to it. It's got a little bit of a texture in there. See those lines? Um, the, uh, the other con for this is that this is too thin. I think, and maybe that's why I won't get bigger ones, or maybe it's just because it's too small or whatever, but um, I find myself really holding onto this pen and it actually makes my hand tired. <laughs> now, granted, I am used to writing with fountain pens and fountain pens don't really require any pressure, and so you don't really feel like, and, and they're usually wider, so I don't feel like I have to grip them as tightly, and that's why people um, who have maybe hand problems or whatever like a fountain pen better because they don't take as much effort, uh, but, um, 
Uh, this one, I do feel like it's a little bit small for me in, in terms of in terms of girth. I would like it to be a bit fatter. Uh, but the refill feels nice, and uh, it feels like it's good quality, especially for a buck sixty-five. That ain't bad. Let's look at a whole bunch of other pens next to it in uh, writing sample form here. Uh, this is a stiff, flexible notebook, which uh, has a very nice paper in it that I like a lot, but it's, it's much cushier than the Rhodia. Um, so uh, up at the top, I've got this Sakura ball sign. Uh, which is right here. It's a weird looking little pen, but uh, writes very nicely. It's got a good uh, got a good gel ink in it, and that's a 0.4. And then underneath that, that's the Serrari, which looks a lot smaller than the 0.4. Now gel usually will spread out a little bit more. It tends to be thicker. But nonetheless, I do think this 0.5 is definitely under <laughs> under uh, under a 0.5. So there we go. There's the the ball sign and the Sakura, or sorry, the Serrari. Now we, next we have a Uniball uh, Signo RT, which is a great version of the Signo. Looks like this, uh, and the Signo RT is uh, coming in at a 0.5. So it's a little bit bigger, but you can see here it's a lot bigger than the than the ball pointy sort of ink of the Serrari. Underneath that, the Pentel Hybrid Technica which is uh, this one. The Hybrid Technica, I need to do a review on pretty soon too, because this is a weirdo pin. It feels like a, it's somewhere between a rollerball and a gel. Like it's a weirdo one, but I um, mean, see that at 0. 0.6, which you don't see very often, is considerably bigger than the 0. 0.5. Uh, next we have the Jetstream 3, which is uh, a triple pin. It's one of these guys. Uh, and that's just the black ink because I was using black inks, but that's a 0.7 and the 0.7 is, you know, maybe it, since it's a ballpoint, it's a little bit smaller than the 0 0.6 Technica, which is more like this weirdo hybrid thing. Then the Jetstream G2, which I have in this Baron Fig Squire, that's a Parker style refill, uh, which is a little bit better, I think, than the, uh, than the ink in this one, although they're probably more or less the same, just I haven't used the Jetstream 3 a whole lot, so maybe it's just get a little bit skippy. Uh, underneath that, I've got the Bic Gelosity, which is one you don't see very often. I haven't heard much about it. What did I even do with it? Uh, I seem to have lost it. Ah, here it is, <laughs> uh, which is this one. This is like a big, thick uh, gel pen with a nice rubbery body. We'll do a review on that one eventually, too, uh, here at 0.7, much thicker. Next to that, the Papermate Inkjoy Gel, which is one of my favorite gels this guy uh, you can see it's just a beautiful thick dark line and that's what they're trying to get with this uh, the Serrari is you get the dark color of a gel point with the uh, the feeling of a, a ball point I don't think you get there with this tiny thin uh, black one but maybe that's just because it's so uh, so tiny I, I don't really know uh, what's next we got this ah, Pintel inner gel X that's this one this is a much fatter uh, gel ink and a more exciting color because it's orange you got the Pintel Intergel 1.0. This is the uh, sort of more classic Intergel 1.0. It's a big one with the tip there. And then lastly, the Pilot Juice. Um, I'm not as big a fan of the juice as I, as I am the Intergel. I think the juice is a little bit skippy for me. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, classic uh, classic gel pen. One of the good Japanese pens. It's kind of hard to get a hold of. You can get pretty much all of these, I think, on jet, on jet pens. So, you know, check them out there. But um, for now, we're talking about the Serrari and the 0.5. It's gonna. It's not. It's not really my favorite, just because I think it is, um, frankly, uh, too too thin. It's just a too fine a point, and it's kind of unexciting. Whereas I'd rather have a ball sign or this uh, Signo RT just a little bit bigger. So if you're looking for something in the uh, the 0.38 and you don't mind it looking kind of thin, uh, I'd say go for it. But otherwise, maybe uh, recognize it's going to be too th too thin for you. And if you like a fatter pen, this is a skinny skinny pen. So uh, keep those things in mind, and I'll see y'all later. Peace out.